that would be me. Nimona. Honestly, I never thought I'd see the day that we get to finally watch this long-awaited project. I know that many animation fans are aware of this, but in case you haven't yet, believe it or not, this is the final animated feature by Blue Sky Studios. Yes, the same Blue Sky that brought us Ice Age, the Peanuts movie, and several others. Sounds crazy, I know, especially when the studio was gone a few years ago, but allow me to explain. Ever since 2015, Blue Sky was working on a film adaptation of the N.D. Stevenson graphic novel with animation veteran Patrick Osborne set to direct. However, as things were getting complicated after Disney acquired Fox and their new bosses were a rather picky bunch, everything came crashing down when the entire studio shut down in April of 2021, with around 75% of the feature completed. It was a sad time for everyone, and even an online campaign was made demanding that they salvage their one major project that held so much promise. But then, the unexpected came the following year, as Anna Porna Picture stepped in to save the movie so that Nimona could be the shape-shifting movie star they were destined to be. With Blue Sky veterans Nick Bruno and Troy Queen taking the helm to finish the job. Now, before we start this, I'd like to point out that I've never read any of the comics or the graphic novel beforehand, and my only knowledge of Nimona is just through the crazy adventure of getting the movie made. So, just to give you context of how this review is going to be, this will be from the perspective of a newcomer to the shapeshifter's antics. So now that we'll be seeing Blue Sky's last major piece of animation, did the studio end off with a chaotic bang? Or did this movie commit a crime as bad as what Ballister is accused of? Let's find out. The Story When the movie begins, you better brace yourself because this starts off on a wild ride. It was honestly surprising how it immediately gets straight to the point about the major situation that the leads find themselves in. By the first 15 minutes, it starts off with, here are the characters, here's what happened, here's the big problem, and here's what they gotta do. Now let's go and jump straight into the action. While this may sound like it was pretty rushed, it was able to deliver a good idea of the concepts and the characters pretty well in an eccentrically fast pace. In fact, the movie doesn't take itself much seriously as it acts a bit more like a Looney Tunes cartoon, where the personalities and the situations are more for comical effect. In a way, the tone is meant to reflect on who Nimona is, a wild rebel who wants to waste no time to get into the crazy fun that the feature promised us. However, I will say that there is a bit of a catch where it is possible that the film can get a little too energetic. Yes, I agree that the film starts out with a lot of fun, but it's with how it can frequently bounce off the walls and try to throw so many jokes in a short amount of time where it can happen that it comes close to becoming annoying. Personally, I never felt my experience spoiled because of that, but there was a part of me that was hoping that the film could just take a moment to calm down from all the chaos that it quickly throws at me. Can you just be you? I don't follow. Thankfully, though, it never reached that point where it goes too far with its tone. That wackiness was only during the first act. As the film progresses and Ballister and Nimona get close to figuring out who framed the former, the mood and what this is all about gradually changes to something that becomes more heartfelt and thought-provoking. You see, Nimona is actually a social commentary regarding intolerance. Specifically, the way that trans and non-binary people get treated because of how they are completely different from what cis people generally understand about gender. Not only does it present how the shapeshifter is labeled by the public as a monster, but it's even shown through the bond of the two leads, as Ballister is presented as the cisgender person trying to comprehend who Nimona is with somewhat ignorant questions. I promise! Oh wow, even when you see the horn? Horn? What do you mean, like a trumpet? Just promise! I promise, 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 I will not freak! Uh... It also challenges the definition of what is a hero and what is a monster. While the standard thought is that a hero is someone who takes down the monster, 
The problem is what is usually labeled as a monster. People believe that they are terrifying creatures with supernatural abilities that they don't comprehend. But the actual monster is the conservative mindset of destroying what is different. And the film shows how that can be more destructive than any monster out there. Yes, this sounds totally different than how it starts. But again, this is a gradual change of pace where it's not like a tonal whiplash. It takes its time to present who Nimona actually is and how much of a tragic figure they are with how being a rebel is their only reason to live. It also shows how the events and the treatment they get affect the other characters, allowing the emotional core to carry both the picture and the message to get audiences more engaged. The world kicks you around sometimes, but together, we can kick it back. Of course, it still retains some of the main aspects that people initially want to see throughout, like some strong action, but the most admirable aspect of the story is how it evolves the overall goal in order to have the viewer get more connected with the characters. From being all about Ballister, to making it more about Nimona and discovering why they are who they are. I will admit that the story here is quite the prankster. It may seem like a cartoony blockbuster at first, but then it slowly unveils itself to reveal that it's actually a deep and strongly emotional movie that ultimately left me in awe. It caught me off guard, but I couldn't be happier that it did. The Animation As the final picture by Blue Sky Studios with D-Neg finishing the job, the result is something unlike anything the late studio made before. In a way, yes, this is following the footsteps of Spider-Verse by crafting a more stylized CG movie instead of being more straightforwardly something that's hyper-realistic or generally cartoony. However, it doesn't go crazy with the art direction to make this look like a comic book coming to life in a psychedelic way. But that doesn't mean that this animation is inferior to what Spider-Verse did. While the style is more subdued compared to others with just a cell-shaded filter that takes away most of the textures in favor of having the colors stand out more, it actually works to enhance the setting. As this movie is set in a neo-futuristic world where the environment is in the sci-fi genre, but follows medieval rules with knights being considered a highly honorable role, the style's approach works to capture the minimalistic look that feels slicker and new. Almost like the movie came out fresh from the factory and completely polished, on top of letting the colors define who the characters are to make them stand out from what's around them. That's what you are. <laughs> Do you think you saw us? Yes. However, as the style itself is more minimal, that doesn't mean there isn't a lot going on in the feature. They still made the backgrounds look impressively big and present the kingdom as a place that has so much going on. Again, it has a medieval mindset, but the environment is very much like a modern city. Also, while some elements are set aside in favor of the style, it gives more attention to other components that are highly impressive. When looking upon the characters, the designs were changed from the source material to have something that's comparable to Disney, which in a way, is what holds the medieval side of the look to make it feel a bit like a classic fairy tale with all the knights and a titular magical being. But unlike most of Disney's recent CG films, the cast is a lot more expressive and the character animation doesn't hold back to go all out with their expressions or try to sell the joke as effectively as possible. And how did you- Whoa, yeah, sick arm. Uh, did it bleed a lot? What? Did they let you keep the old one? No, let go. What is wrong with you? But then there is the case with Nimona. Visually, they really are the standout star with most of the film's memorable moments. In their human form, they are debatably the most like a cartoon with their comical expressions and often break the rules of what a person would do like suddenly have sharp teeth. However, it's their shape-shifting ability that truly stands out. Not only are they able to turn into whatever animal they wish, but each form still retains a small element that can still make it recognizable that it is Nimona outside of the pink color. It's very similar to the chase scene in The Emperor's New Groove or The Wizard's Duel in The Sword in the Stone, where part of the fun of the character is all the creative ways they shapeshift to get out of a sticky situation. So you're a girl and a rhino? And a lot of things. <laughs> 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 and this 
is not to mention how this adds on to the exhilaration of the action scenes. The film establishes quickly that it can have a fast pace, which makes the action engaging and takes advantage of the big stage that is set up for the characters so that they can get through hordes of knights and make the fights look really big. I'll admit that even during the days when the studio was alive, Blue Sky usually provided some really nice looking animation, and in the case of Nimona, this was a project where they, along with the team at DNEG, really outdone themselves. The characters. When it begins with its high speed and wacky tempo, you'd think that the movie gave us everything we need to know about the characters. They establish who they are, what development they may go through, and then just enjoy the adventure as it moves forward. Over time, however, much like the film itself, there is a lot more to them than what they first seen, and present their emotional purpose to have the viewer understand them in ways that they never thought before. It really helps when the movie also has great actors to deliver that wide range of emotions so that they can effectively perform comedically and dramatically to make their roles feel more genuine. Especially when it comes to the leads with Chloe Grace Moretz and Riz Ahmed. They were both amazing in this. Okay, how old do you think I am? I don't know, 10? All right, help me out, more or less than 10. Not a lot of kids in your life, huh? Y you know what, no. Let's go and begin this with Nimona themselves, a rebellious shapeshifter who is a lot like Bugs Bunny, a smart aleck trickster who loves causing chaos everywhere they go, and no matter how dangerous the situation they find themselves in, they always enjoyably find a way to get out of it. However, inside that anarchic exterior, there is a tragic figure whom all their life is constantly repulsed from their supernatural ability and their difference from others was only greeted by hatred and threats. The reason why they connected with Ballister is because all they want is to no longer feel alone and to not be the only outcast that is labeled as a villain. They hold the emotional core where they have both the funniest and the saddest moments of the picture. And I can imagine how they will be fondly remembered by many as one of the best examples of the outcast archetype, especially as a living allegory of those who are not cisgender. Yeah, do you like it? I thought a visual aid would really make my resume pop. What? Alongside them is Ballister Blackheart, who was wrongfully accused of killing the queen and is now viewed as a criminal running from the law. He lost everything when the incident occurred, and it was just when he was about to make his dream come true of becoming a knight and breaking the kingdom's traditions. It shows that it is hard for him to look back, especially when seeing his broken-hearted boyfriend, but that only gives him time to learn about Nimona. He was confused with them at first, but since they are his only ally, he takes the time to understand and grow a bond with Nimona. Your sidekick has arrived. I don't need a sidekick. Every villain needs a sidekick. I'm not a villain! And throughout the whole journey, other characters play a role that can deeply impact the leads like Ambrosius Goldenloin, Ballister's boyfriend who is in such emotional pain about his love situation. But as a knight, he must do his duties to protect the kingdom. However, this puts him in a tough spot where he must either follow his orders or follow his heart. Also, there's another knight named Todd, who honestly annoys me so much with his high school jock-like bully attitude. I know it's done on purpose to make him despicable, but I end up hating him for the wrong reasons, like his moments are never funny, and it always feels like he's trying too hard to enforce his personality to say that he's a bad guy. And then there is the director. With the queen gone, she is the one in charge of the kingdom and the person who wants to ensure that justice is served for their late ruler's passing and that the traditions that they've kept for thousands of years remain alive. There could be more I could say about them, but then I'd probably get into some real spoiler territory. But trust me when I say that some of these people can have some surprises that help make the message more profound. On top of some great LGBTQ plus representation, the characters make a powerful impact onto the film that can make you both laugh, cry, and appreciate the things that make us different. With all that said, the only thing I really have left to say is, thank you, Annapurna Pictures. 
Thank you for saving this movie so that we can all experience what could debatably be an animated masterpiece. Nimona is not only an amazing send-off for Blue Sky Studios, but it technically counts as the greatest movie they have ever made. As it supplies a wonderfully engaging story, really nice animation, fun-filled action scenes, a powerful message against intolerance, admirable LGBTQ representation, a solid voice cast, and great characters, I can confidently say that this will be a fan-favorite film that will be celebrated for years to come. I know I may sound crazy by throwing all these praises, but I highly recommend that you go check this out. This is a feature that you got to see it to believe it. Not even this review does justice to convey the emotional power that this movie holds. And speaking of which, if you did enjoy this review, then please give this a like and come subscribe to my channel. You could join me in discovering many more movies that could be the next animated treasure. I don't think I've ever done this to a Blue Sky movie before, but there is always a first for everything. So it's time for me to give Nimona the Animat Seal of Approval. This is easily among the best animated movies you'll find on Netflix next to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. And as Nimona spreads their anarchy onto the platform, it serves as a great reminder that Blue Sky never dies.